future generations, assuring you of the best professional real estate service at all times. Good evening, it's Thursday and welcome to Mansfields, Melbourne on Optus Local Vision. And our headliner tonight, our guest in a moment, we're going to meet as Melbourne's greatest theatrical entrepreneur, one of them certainly, Ken Brodziak, and a pleasure to meet up with a good old friend. With Easter coming up, June Wilhelm will show us the art of gilding eggs. Steve Roscovy is taking us to the uh, election hustings at Maroonda. Oliver Spurway will talk to us about his brand new restaurant venture, Nadia's in South Yarra. We'll have a look at this weekend's Mooney Valley Community Festival. And John Morgan of Ivanhoe will tell us about the Northern Gateway of Melbourne. But first, Melbourne's local news on Mansfield's Melbourne, Claire Halliday. Welcome to the local news on Mansfield's Melbourne, and I'm Claire Halliday. An audit on the performance of White Horses Council commissioners will indicate impressive outcomes reports Chris Fincham of the Whitehorse Post newspaper. Whitehorse Chief Commissioner Jeff Oscar told the Post that the findings of a due diligence audit will soon be publicly released and show that the municipality is in good shape. The Canterbury Family Centre will hold its Family Centre Autumn Fest this Sunday at the Nunnawadding Arts and Entertainment Centre. Bernadette Funnell says the centre provides an enormous role in promoting a positive future for vulnerable families. From pregnant adolescents and young single mothers to entire families and young children. Amongst those to appear will be Humphrey B. Bear, footballer, footballers Alex Jezelenko and Paul Salmon, jazz singer Judy Jarks and the Dutch Tilders Band. Secondary school students in the West have less chance of passing VCE than their eastern suburbs counterparts, reports David Adamson of the Brimback Independent newspaper. His article says up to 33% of VCE students in the West failed English, compared to only 8.5% in the inner eastern suburbs. That's all for now. Back to you, Bruce. Thank you, Claire, for the local news. And... Uh as I mentioned before, Ken Brodziak for many decades has been a name associated with theatre and show business here in Melbourne. And I suppose, Ken, as I welcome you to Mansfields, Melbourne. Hi. How are you? I suppose you're greatly associated with the, the Beatles. Do you ever get tired of being asked about the Beatles? Yes, I do. Do you? Oh, well, I won't yeah. talk about them. Uh, right, you get a better interview if you don't talk too much about the Beatles. Yes, just b briefly, was it a good and uh, interesting time for you? Yeah, it was exciting, but I stayed cool. But you, of course, everybody else got so excited. Yes, yeah, well, didn't it? It, it stopped Melbourne. I mean, crowds. Yeah. Uh, uh, who, who else did you, you bring out and, uh, and associate with? Well, I brought 150 different shows and attractions. It would take a long time to tell you all of them now. Yeah. But I'll just name a few. Cliff Richard, Bob Dylan, Anna Neagle, Derek Nemo, The Kinks, The Who, The Animals. A lot of names, uh, the big names then, now are forgotten. Yeah. Peter, Paul and Mary, and Jessica, uh, Don McLean. Shows like A Chorus Line, Annie, Dracula, and so it goes on. Uh, Marlena Dietrich, was she? Marlena one? Dietrich, yes. she was my number one favourite. Was she? Yes. Uh, what was there about it, Ken? She was so challenging. She was a, to any entrepreneur, she pr uh, proposed a challenge. You had to meet it, and I found a way of getting around her. We got on famously. I corresponded with her right up until the time of her death. I have lots of mementos and letters from her notes really and uh, I value them greatly. Because she was such a challenging performer, was it then a challenge for you to overcome that? Well no, she had a reputation of being difficult and I like dealing with difficult people. Yeah. I didn't find it difficult at all, I just found out how to handle her and we got along famously. Yeah, the last time I saw you, you were sitting in the stalls at uh, the Regent and uh, it was the opening night of Sunset Boulevard. Yes, yes. Great night. It was, it was a terrific night. Yeah. Do, do you enjoy that type of theatre or the one-off star? I prefer musical comedy or musical shows above all. I do like some one-off stars. Some of the concert tours I liked particularly was Don McLean, Herb Alpert, the Tijuana Brass and Peter, Paul and Mary. But my favourites really would go back to the musical shows or the performers like 
Marlena Dietrich or Carol Channing. Yes, of today's stars, the superstars, would you, if you were still in the business, who would be the one headliner you'd bring to Melbourne? Oh, well, everybody says Barbara Streisand. I think she's the one I wouldn't bring to Melbourne mm. because I did try very hard when I was operating and the conditions she posed were impossible. Oh. But she only posed it because she didn't want to come. So I'm not sure who I'd bring uh, uh, to Melbourne now There's, because everyone is coming out here and Melbourne's seen a great variety of stars from all over the world. Would the Melbourne of today have been more exciting, well not exciting, but uh, more susceptible to bigger names because of the venues we have now? Yes and no. They have bigger names, the higher prices. So now it's say $75 upwards to go to a show, yeah. whereas when I was presenting, it would be $10, $12, sometimes $8. Yes. So it's a little bit difficult to compare them. I've just recently given all my box office records to the Victorian Performing Arts Museum, which goes 30 years of history of theatre, really 35 years. And it's quite uh, interesting to watch the admission prices and the attendances then as to what they are now. Yeah. See, the Beatles, which were the biggest attraction in the world, was $3.70. Oh, so today, if a, an equivalent of that came to be seventy, eighty, ninety dollars. Yes, of course. Well, the three tenors are up to fifteen hundred dollars. Have you collected much over the years, Ken, of, uh, of paraphernalia, memorabilia? I've got a lot of memorabilia. I've given a lot to the Performing Arts Museum and I'll give them some more, but I do have certain treasures that I will keep and eventually I think they'll all go to the museum. Ken, did you ever write a book on, on your, uh, your experiences? Well, I didn't write a book, but the biography is being done more than one and some news about its publishing might be available soon. At the moment, I can't tell you any more than that. Oh, that'd be a, that'd be a runaway success, I'm sure, Ken. Mm -hmm. Well, you're very much part of Melbourne. You still love the racing? Yes, I do. I can't get around as much as I used to. No. I still like the racing. I still like musicals. I still like swimming. And I just did as long as I can. Yeah, well, you're looking very well and good to see you on top of things. Well, thank you. Our very special guest on uh, Mansfield's Melbourne uh, this Thursday night, Ken Brodziak. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. For 40,000 years, this was the home of the Wurundjeri people. Today, it's Nilambikshire, a vast and varied expanse of bushland homes, farms and forest extending from the Yarra in the south as far north as the Great Dividing Range at King Lake National Park. Nilambik was one of many Aboriginal names given by surveyor Robert Hoddle. One interpretation of its meaning is shallow soil. You can misuse the name, you know, you can say it means rotten soil and so on, but it doesn't. But it's a good Aboriginal name and it's quite common. It was used for a hundred years. In the early years when people came up here, they didn't have a name, Diamond Creek. The creek was named, but there was no town. So a hundred years ago, people tended to live in Nilambic or near Nilambic because there was no other name. So it's been used for a long time and we're pretty happy with it. A 
thanks to the Nillimbic Shire for that uh, beautiful footage and uh, activity out uh, in the Nillimbic area. Let's move south of the Yarra now to beautiful Malvern. And we're jo uh, joined by June Wilhelm of Romantic Art and Craft Supplies. And I'll give you their address in, uh, in a moment. June, welcome to Mansfield's Melbourne. Thank you very much, Bruce. There's nothing I love more than these these gilded and gold eggs. They look beautiful. It gives you a wonderful feeling of uh, power. It, well, especially <laughs> at Christmas time, there's a yes. warmth about it. Yes, and Easter coming up yes. shortly. Tell us how, how you do this gilding craft. Well, I've simplified this gilding um, little process. Right. We have five fingers. Right. First, we put, that's our little egg and that has a coat of gesso. That's like a little sealer. Right. The second process, I put a coat of red. Red, red paint under the gold is a wonderful colour for the, the gold seems to pick up red. You right. can put other colours underneath. Right. That's step two. Step three, we put the, the milk or the size, and that's why this is glistening, and it goes on white, but then it'll come out clear. And once that dries, or doesn't actually dry, it remains tacky. This is when the fun starts. I pick up an egg, like so, and on this very, very micro-thin leaf, I roll it around, and this one could take a little bit more, but we're in a... Yes. We've pushed but the we've time. we've got the idea. We've got there. the idea, and there we have a gilded egg. So you've just seen... Uh uh, June actually lay a gilded egg, <laughs> and here's one of the uh, the finished product. But uh, that's a wonderful. And there we are. And you're going to do another one for yep, us? Yeah, just then. done it. I've got better this time. Very good. Can, now, would you like to put the gloves on and do one? Well, I'd try one. All right. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think I'll you should. Uh, and how's the shop going down there? Oh, in it's Morgan, very, June? very good. I have wonderful ladies who who do some great craft. Apart from doing gilding. They, they too big? <laughs> no, they're too small. <laughs> now, we always feel like the there's egg. the tacky egg. There's the tacky egg. Give me the... Uh, don't be too too quick. Well, we're going to go pop, pop that in for there. Right. And pick it up. It grabs oh, the great. milk. It does grab, grab. It grabs into that. Now, just yes. roll it around. If you remember when you were a child and you used course. to do those silver paper just, yeah. uh, balls. Now, well, there mine we are. is a bit... Uh, well, no, I'll keep rubbing. Still, I'll keep, keep rubbing. rubbing. That's wonderful. And there you are. And, and you have all of those arts and crafts at, uh, at your shop? At Romantic, and we have all the supplies available in time for Easter. June Wilhelm at Romantic Art and Craft Supplies, 68 Milton Parade, Morven. That was lovely. Oh, thank you. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs>
that um, our uh, natural environment is protected and there is a balance right. uh, between development and uh, uh, the protection of our national... A yeah, balance in all things is, yes. is the way to go, Steve, isn't it? Now, community security and welfare, the aged and the youth are all part from... Yes, well, uh, uh, I actually, I think I'm lucky today. Uh, if we look at the front page of the Herald Sun today, I think it is a natural a national disgrace that a 86-year-old... Uh, war widow is being thrown out on the street due to the lack of adequate homes mm. for the aged and for the homeless youth. And uh, when I get into council, I certainly uh, will be fighting uh, for this issue as well as the other, other issues I stand for. You uh, are family conscious yourself, I know, because yes. of your very proud uh, grandson, is it? Yes, my first and only grandson. Ah, well, uh, we've got a record for him, uh, certainly on videotape yes. for the rest of his life. He's Thank a you. Good baby, by the look of it. He's and excellent. Uh, all the best to you. Thank you very much. I'll put the baby down and come back to uh, Thank you, Steve Ruscovi, who is standing for the Wyrena Ward. Thanks for being part of this. Thank Mansfield's you very much Melbourne. for the interview. Uh, okay, uh, I you. appreciate it. This is Mansfield's <laughs> Melbourne, and uh, uh, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> On Mansfield, Melbourne, from the Yarra to the Maribyrnong and the Mooney Valley Festival is already in big progress at the moment and uh, this coming weekend the celebrations will really liven up. And we welcome uh, Martin Payton and uh, Karin uh, Anchin to the program. Welcome to Mansfield, Melbourne. There you go. And you're both born and bred in uh, Mooney Valley? Yes, we are both. Uh, yeah. uh, when you say Mooney Valley Festival, I immediately think of the racetrack. Mm, most people do. Uh, that's been part of our aim with this festival, to start to build up a bit of an understanding about the culture of that area, which is, has an incredibly diverse community, and the, uh, the natural surroundings in that area move right beyond the race course itself. There's a very big Turkish community out that way, isn't that's it? That's right, yes, yeah. and uh, Latin American, Horn of African, uh, Vietnamese, uh, yeah, it goes on. It's very well, well, if your different. festival, Karine, uh, reflects that sort of atmosphere, Diversity it'll be a terrific mix, won't yes, it? Yes, we've got a World Food Fair next Saturday night. Great. Down by the Maribyrnong River and um, uh, the youth bands and uh, Melbourne Parks and Waterways Great. stages, back-to-back -back music along the river and also on the Saturday at um, Mooney Ponds, Queen's Park, which is a very historic place. So you're mm. using the Maribyrnong too for a mm -hmm. lot of the activities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, throughout the day there's a big youth fiesta and then later on in the day there's uh, a carnival and builds up to the fireworks display and a, an evening dance party in the park. So it starts Saturday and ends? Sunday in right. Queen's Park and Saturday's down on the Maribyrnong River. So Queen's Park is where? It's in Mooney Ponds. Right. Yes. And there's uh, more of a world uh, world music program on Sunday. We've got about six stages. Uh, Good. Whole range of life. Well, so uh, the Maribyrnong and Mooney Valley will be really uh, a focus for Melbourne on this weekend. Mm. Barry yeah, Humphreys isn't making a surprise visit, is he? We tried. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Yeah. We did well, try. We yeah. would have liked him to come down and open the Artist Writers Week, which officially opened last night with yes. the contemporary art shows and children's international art shows and uh, uh, we've got quite a lot of famous authors out there next week Good. doing programs for schools, uh, maybe educational based programs using books and uh, theatre and uh, uh, illustrators like Jeff Ragless from Mambo Designs is doing a couple yeah. of workshops so yeah. it's See, been really is, good programs. Good. A lot of the festivals mm. are all fairy floss and rides but this mm. is a bit of oh, no, substance to it. Like mm. so. There's a lot going on as you can see from our program. Which Where is can we get really the program long. by the way? Um, you, People can ring up council. Yes, the best way room. is uh, 9243-8717. That's mm. the main Doing number for it. You look yeah. very much like Andrew Denton, is that uh, right? I've been <laughs> told that before. <laughs> no, I'm talking to Carrie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this gives okay. you some idea, I don't know whether we can yeah. get a close-up or not, um, of the activities. And there's so many, uh, we can't list them all. No, no. no it's a long program. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you very much, Martin and uh, Karen, for coming along thank to you. be with us uh, yeah. today. Thanks very much. Melbourne. Good. Thank you. On Mansfield's Melbourne, our regular, well this week anyway, Rick Milne is with us, uh, Mr Collectible here in Melbourne. Thanks for joining us again, Rick. You're welcome, Bruce. Good yeah, idea. Yeah, sure, good. Now, tell us about your jaunts. You, you go around Australia quite a lot, don't you, looking for the uh, ephemera. I'm getting the old Austin A40 and I head up, up the highway and we got to Narandra up in the middle of New South Wales a few months ago and we were called by somebody who had an old store. Yes. And pulling down the old store because it, it was uh, long gone, uh, closed, they were pulling the store down and they found some of these most wonderful signs up in the ceiling of that store in Narandra in New South Wales. And I thought I might bring a few in today and show you. I suppose when they shifted stock, that'd be the only storage area, Only place you could put them, that's right. Yeah, 
and and messy around the shop. That's right. So uh, I guess they just put them up there out of the way yeah. and forgot all about them. Now, I must say, they've all been cleaned up. They were covered in a layer of dust about that thick. Yes. Are there still a lot of the old stores around Australia with, with the real collectibles? I think there are. I actually think there are. There are. There are some that are known. There are lots that simply aren't known. Little tiny towns that have uh, long been passed by with the for example, the Royal Line is closed down, the town has stopped, well, yeah. uh, I'm sure that they're out there, yeah, yes, no doubt. Yeah. Mm. You like to haunt around uh, Queensland a bit. You think that's the last frontier up there, In don't some you? ways. New South Wales too, top of New South Wales, up through Tamworth and all the way up through the, to the border and up into Stanthorpe and some places up in the Queensland. Yeah, I think Queensland is good. Let's have a look at some of these signs. Okay, this was one that was found up on the roof. Great old sign for uh, Tui's. I guess that was a, a licensed premises at oh, that stage. Oh, that's but beautiful. With the uh, hand of cards. cards. Lovely piece and top condition. So that would sell for about 300 maybe $400. Right, and, uh, and just in front of that, I'll... Uh, Isn't that a great name? One? This will fit. <gasps> this will fit bathing suits. Isn't that lovely? From about, I'd say about 1920, 19... Uh, uh, rather uh, racy for the day, showing a woman in a bathing suit. It was most uncommon for, for those times. Yeah, and men wore bathing suits like that. Not they that they too. had uh, the uh, bra section. But oh, we, some did. <laughs> they were the next Better built ones, yes. Better built men. That's right, yeah. These are beautiful. Yeah, they are lovely. And, and very Australian. Kanga brand. <gasps> you just wouldn't do that now. It would be seen to be, oh, not sophisticated enough, but that's a lovely old uh, ad. And absolutely perfect condition. That's it why is. these would sell for three or four hundred dollars a piece. understand how beautiful they are. Yeah, lovely. You know, in, in such good condition and so old. Yep. Kanga rugs again. See, yes. Again, the use of the kangaroo uh, brand. And, of course, dressed in the latest style of the 1930s with the fedora and uh, such. You know, lovely piece. Look at these men. Well, they're having a good time. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like your dressing off. room here at Optus. It does a bit, doesn't it? Uh, lounging back with your uh, yes. pyjamas on and your dressing gown, a bit yeah. sus. But, uh, you wouldn't lounge around like that, would well, you? hardly. Two no. blokes in their podgies. But, but I'll tell you what, see that little <laughs> candlestick phone there? That itself, if you can find one of those, they're worth they? about oh, hundreds of dollars. Are they? Oh, boy. <laughs> And there's another one from Kanga as Have well. Have you got shares in Kanga? <laughs> I just thought they were charming. So, well, lovely. I guess that that was one of the big uh, retailers of the day. Yes. How come some of those appeared up on top of them? Rick, terrific having you on Mansfield's Melbourne. We'll see you again soon. Look forward to it. Good Thanks, on you. Bruce. Rick Milne. Welcome back to Mansfield's Melbourne. And each week on the show, we'll be joined by John Morgan of John Morgan Real Estate in Ivanhoe. Thanks for being with us, John. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Glad so to be here. You're looking after Ivanhoe, Eaglemont, Rosanna, That's Heidelberg. Right. Yep. We we go out from the north from that pivotal point at Ivanhoe out towards uh, Ivanhoe, uh, Eaglemont, Rosanna, McLeod, areas like that. So do you have a network also of inner city agents and uh, a network? That's right. In fact, Bruce, what we do is we have um, this magazine is a weekly magazine that we put out. Right. The Property Profile Group and there are 28 agents in that group. Now most of those agents are closer into the city. Yes. So the point is, is that they, we then secure those types of buyers who are looking to move further out of Melbourne but not too far out right. of Melbourne. So the idea is, is that um, we tap into that through this uh, network of agents and, um, and we take them through to Ivanhoe and out to Rosanna and um, areas right. like that. It's a very lovely publication. Very high quality, actually. Yeah. We've been told that by a number of people. Now, I do know the area. Uh, I've lived out there for mm. a long time, and, and it's pretty competitive. You're a new kid on the block, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, what's your focus? What, do you, what would you like to see for your clients that well, isn't there now? No, no, that's fine, because, in fact, uh, when you say I'm a new kid on the block, I have been in, in the area for 20 years. So, But it's been interesting, because I have been operating in Rosanna right. earlier. And then I opened an office 10 years ago in, in Ivanhoe. So I saw Ivanhoe as a very important point to work from, Yes. knowing that uh, Rosanna's a lovely area, but it doesn't quite get on the map as easily as uh, some of the, shall we say, trendy suburbs in Melbourne. And I think Ivanhoe's got a very good name. Uh, Eaglemont, as you know, is referred to as the Turak of the North, um, which um, you know was an interesting way of putting it. Why is it when you get a list of burglaries or values <laughs> in property. You never see places like Eaglemont or Darabin or, you know, th th those little pockets. It's mm. always you're lumped with Heidelberg or Ivanhoe. Well, that's right, because, oh, I think Eaglemont's, um, you know, let's face it, I mean, it's it's a pretty safe location to live in. Yes. Um, uh, 
No, but I mean they're, they're missed in the bigger municipality. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's yeah. true, because it is part of Ivanhoe, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Then you've true. got East Ivanhoe, West Ivanhoe. So you've got a bit of involvement with the Banyol Homestead and the School that's of right. Artists? Um, yes, what's happened is, is that um, we were chosen by the Victorian Government to sell the Banyol Homestead oh, back in right. 1995. There's the brochure, in fact, or a full page ad that we ran at that time. Yes. And in fact, uh, What's come of that is, is that uh, that's started a bit of a, a trend now to look at what areas can be used to push the Heidelberg School of Artists. Right, right. And uh, even up in Eaglemont on the hill there, there is a famous spot there in there Summit is. Drive there where they, they, they took the painting from there. John, thank you very much. John Morgan that's from fine. John Morgan Real Estate up a Heidelberg Road in Ivanhoe. And that's the show for Melbourne on this uh, Thursday. Thank you for being with us. Thank you to my guests, Ken Brodziak and Rick Mill and all of our other mates, including you, John, from the staff, from the, uh, the floor crew and the director and his crew. Good night from Mansfields, Melbourne. Hudson Bond Real Estate for this and future generations, assuring you of the best professional real estate service at all times.